Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for coming and writing with me this morning. I'm so excited to be getting some work done. I have a lot of writing to get done this morning, so I hope you do too, because I'm ready to settle in for some pretty long sprints. How are you all doing? What are you working on this morning? Let me know in the comments. Yeah, I have a lot of editing to do. I've been, I'm about to get some edits back on my sequel that I'm working on. So before I get those edits back, I've been doing a little bit of thinking on my own and planning. And I already know that there are a lot of different things that I need to do with that book. So I'm trying to get all of my thoughts in order before I hear what other people think so that I can go into these beta reader feedbacks and editor thoughts with as much you know, of a balanced mind as I possibly can. Hello, everybody. I'm so happy that you're here. Hi, Micah. Thank you for coming and writing with me today. I'm so happy that you're here on the stream. Hello, Gauze Tape. Thank you so much for coming. Hi, Piper. I'm so glad you're back. Welcome to our stream this morning. I am very excited to write with you all. This is going to be really fun. So I think, I don't know how you're feeling. Maybe we can just get started with like a shorter warm-up sprint. I am thinking of maybe just like starting with a 15 minute sprint and we can slowly build our way up. I don't know if you all like a more like longer sprints or if you're more inclined to the shorter sprints. So let me know in the comments because we're a pretty small group this morning so we can really tailor it to what we all wanna do. Goss Tape says, I've been slacking off. I need to get some writing done. Yeah, same, I <laughs> agreed. <laughs> I have also been doing that. I really need to get some work done. Mike, I said, I'm just printing out my first draft of my novel, which I finished just this morning. Congratulations. That's huge. That's so exciting. Congratulations on finishing your first draft. Oh, that's the best feeling. I love the feeling of like the big printout when you can really like see everything in a big stack of paper for the first time. It's the most satisfying feeling ever. <laughs> Hi, Yaza. Good morning. Thanks so, so much for joining the stream. Um, I hope that you can stick around and do some sprints with us. I think we're just getting started with our first sprint, or we're about to get started with our first sprint now. I'm thinking we do 15 minutes. I am going to set the timer. I don't know if you have preferences for sound, but I was really feeling the guitar sound that we used in the last sprint. So I think I'm gonna stick with that one for now. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I share it with sound this time because last time I did a sprint, I was not very savvy in that department and didn't. So let's see. All right, I think that should work. Um, so I'm gonna change that to 15 minutes. All right, so happy warm up sprint, everybody, and I'll see you in 15 minutes. Happy writing.
All right, how was that sprint for everybody? Did you all hear the sound? Did I do it correctly? Let me know if I didn't and I'll fix it again for our next sprint. But that was a very organizational sprint for me. I just kind of gathered my thoughts and kind of made a plan for what I was gonna do revisions wise. I'm not actually drafting right now. Originally, I wanted to fast draft a new project that I have in mind during this time between when beta readers were reading my sequel and when I would get it back. But it turns out that I have a lot more work to do on the sequel to get it to a place where it's ready to release than I originally thought. So I've just been brainstorming and I took about a week off and now I'm back to the drawing board. So, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it do be like that sometimes. Um, we had some people drop in during that last sprint. I'm so happy to see more of you have joined us. Good morning, the Unwanted Book Club. Thank you so much for coming and writing with us. I've just got to get some coffee. My goal for the day is 4,000. Awesome. Yeah, my goal for the day is to have a finished outline for this new draft of the sequel, incorporating all of the things that I want to change. I have a new color coded. I know I'm like, I talk about plot grids on this channel a lot, and I really do love plot grids. But for this new, like I usually do plot grids for maybe draft one, draft two, and instead of doing another plot grid for draft three, because I really wasn't feeling it, I have just been doing kind of a scene by scene outline in Word and color coding it. So I've been like highlighting things in green that I want to add and highlighting things in red that I need to change. And it's been working for now. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, I'm very excited to like get back to drafting. I might have to take a break between books two and three not like a break break between like my publication schedule, but like just take a month and fast draft this new project because I'm so excited about it. And I just love drafting. Drafting is so much fun. But yes, I also have my coffee. If you're a coffee drinker, make sure you have coffee when you do these sprints because it makes them more productive in my personal experience. Micah said, I finally finished printing out my novel and it is so exciting to hold all of these pages in my hands. I think I'll just put it away for about two weeks and then I'll revise as 108K words. My manuscript is also 108K words right now. <laughs> nice. Um, that's so, I mean, that, congratulations again. I know I already said this, but this is such a huge accomplishment. And I, it's also my favorite feeling when you just get to print it out and hold it in your hands. I always like end up reading about like halfway through my big printout or like maybe once all the way through, but I just, I prefer doing all my little edits on the computer because it takes such a long time. So I like doing the printouts when it's like a little bit closer to proofreading just because otherwise I will like be moving everything around and it will take me like 10 years to incorporate everything that I wrote down on the page into my big document. But I sometimes do it anyway, just for the satisfying feeling of holding it. <laughs> Hi, Anugra. I'm so happy that you were able to make it and join our sprint today. It's very nice to see you. Um, I That's awesome that you're working on your sixth chapter. I hope that you're able to get more work done in our sprints too this morning. Hello, Streamros. Thank you so much. That's very sweet. Um, thank you so much for coming and writing with us this morning. Oh, good. Okay, good. I'm glad that you heard the sound. Yeah, I am a little bit technologically challenged, so technologically challenged because I also know how to speak English. Awesome, congratulations, Piper. That's that's huge. I also, I actually, I have 39 chapters in the book that I published just a month and a half ago. That's so funny. <laughs> We're all like manuscript twins. <laughs> Lurie said, I love horror. It's my favorite genre. So I really enjoyed that video you made on how to write horror. Oh, I'm so glad. I love horror too. I wish that I was not as much of a scaredy cat and could write more like creepy horror, but I get too scared by the things that I write. So I have to keep it like a little bit lighter. Like Stranger Things, I never got nightmares about, but you know, things like Hereditary, I got some serious nightmares. It's pretty scary. <laughs> I'm only on chapter six of my new story. I have zero chapters of my new story, so you're way ahead of me. <laughs> I So how are you all feeling about doing another sprint? I don't really have very many fun, exciting writing stories to share with you all today. Um, yeah, I've just been working on this new sequel that I've already kind of talked about. And I don't think that you all need to hear about it as much as I've been talking about it. But yeah, so I think that maybe we'd be best served by doing other sprint. How do you all feel? Did we, do we feel like we've taken an adequate break? Do you have any fun writing news or writing stories that you want to share in the comments? We can talk about them. Or if you have any questions about your works in progress or any like, you know, plot holes that you found in your manuscript that you want to talk out, we can all like help each other out and chat with each other about them. 
if we want to take a little bit more of a writing break. But I don't feel particularly entertaining this morning. So I think we're probably better off <laughs> writing and talking about writing. <laughs> Cost tape said, let's do another. All right. Yeah, let's do another sprint. Oh, Lurie asked, what's a sprint? I only know the running type of sprint. Yes. So a sprint, or at least what I've been referring to as a sprint, is a writing sprint. And I usually set a timer for around like anywhere between 15 minutes and 30 minutes. And during that time, we just write without any distractions. We just focus on writing and write as many words as we can in that time. And then afterwards, we'll like stop and chat a little bit and then we'll start another. This is how I really like to write because it forces me to really focus on what I'm doing for that allotted amount of time. And then I can kind of turn my brain off in between sprints. So that's what I do in these live streams is that we do a bunch of different sprints and then we chat for a little bit and then we do more sprints and try to get all of the words in as, or as many words in as we possibly can. Goss Tape said, my last story made my girlfriend cry. Whenever I bring it up, she gets mad. That's the only writing story I have. Oh no, <laughs> your poor girlfriend. That's very sad. <laughs> I mean, it, but it's also a very effective story. I bet if it's, you know, making people feel those kinds of emotions. So if you're able to like cause that reaction in people, it's always, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's sometimes it's a really hard thing to achieve, although it might not be a very good thing for your girlfriend. <laughs> Lurie said, I'm drawing right now so I can draw instead of write. Yeah, exactly. It's the same principle. It's just like, it's not even necessarily a writing sprint. I know a lot of people will read during these sprints or draw or do other things too. Like I've also edited YouTube videos during sprints that I've done with friends. You know, it's like more of a productivity sprint rather than just a writing sprint. But because my channel is kind of based around writing stuff, I call them writing sprints. <laughs> so yeah, what I mean, whatever you want to do. I mean, there are so many different versions of productivity. Whatever you believe is the most productive thing for you to be doing, you can do that instead of writing. It's, you know, we're a very inclusive space here on this channel. <laughs> All right, so let's do another sprint. How are we feeling about maybe going to 25 minutes this time? Um, I think that maybe, you know, we can, oh, we got a couple more comments. We'll talk about those first. Piper said, do you have any tips for naming characters? My character's name is Bethany Bierman, and I don't know how I came up with that, but that's the name I'm dead set on. That's a cool name, actually. I, I, I like the uh, fact that they both start with Bs. It makes it kind of, a, like, it's, it's fun to say. Um, so my big tips for naming characters, which I actually, like, I heard this advice after I named the characters in they stay. So not all of them follow these rules. But the piece of naming character advice that really resonated with me was like going back on websites, like, I don't know, if you are setting your book in Ohio, like I am right now, and I would go back to like, there's a state registry, and you can enter the name, or uh, like the name of the state that you're looking up, and then also the year that you want to look, and it'll tell you like the top 100 names for that state in that year. So then like, that's how I named a lot of my peripheral characters. So I'd say like, okay, this character is like this age when the book starts. So I go and like see what the most popular names of that time period are and then name that character that. I, you know, my main characters, I just love the name Shiloh. Like it didn't really make any sense for the like kind of, you know, really conservative sheriff and like, you know, his wife to be naming their kid kind of like the name that Angelina Jolie chose for her kid. But, you know, like I, I love the name. So I put a one sentence little note in my book saying like, you know, because the it, there's a subplot of domestic violence in the book. And there was one sentence that Shiloh said, she was like, yeah, dad didn't used to always be like this. He used to be like a lot different and used to name or like let my mom or name me after Angelina Jolie's kid. I don't know. There's like some sort of sentence I put in to justify it. But yeah, I like to look at those kind of popular names by state. And that helps me at least. And then also I just, you know, pick names that I like. And then I can kind of color my setting by naming other characters that aren't as important things that would be more realistic to that time period and that place. Sorry, that was like a lot of word vomit, but <laughs> I hope that that helps. I can try to, during the sprint, I'll find the website and I'll put it in the comments. The Unwanted Book Club said, sometimes I'll read or edit. I'm just more behind on the writing. Yeah, I don't read as much as I wish that I did. I really need to get back on a more consistent reading schedule. I've just been like so stressed about this sequel that I spend all of my time working on revisions and then also social media stuff because that's become a lot of, you know, I have to do a lot of social media stuff now because I've I was decided to start actually like making TikTok videos and I'm behind on YouTube videos. So I've been filming a lot of those and 
yeah, I need to get better at reading. Unfortunately, reading's always the first thing that has to go off my to-do list because it's more of a pleasure activity. But I mean, also it's not. It's also very important for me to read to get better as a writer. But yeah, it's like working out. I need to read more. <laughs> Streamero said, I'm a physician writing a therapy book for couples. The name is the equivalent exchange in love. It's in Spanish, but I got 17 chap chapters by now. Thanks to you. Oh, thank you so much. That's really awesome. I don't really know very much about writing nonfiction, but that's very cool. That sounds like an important, like it sounds like a book that couples would be very interested in reading. Gauze Tape says, I just make up crazy names. Yeah, sometimes I do too. I had an issue where... Um, I was trying to name my villain and in my first drafts all the characters referred to the villain as just like the man but um i eventually decided that he needed a name because even during the climax they were just like the man did this and the man did this but i didn't know what kind of name would be like a creepy villain name that would be you know maybe normal to have for this character in this contemporary book so i ended up naming him leonard and it's not a very like scary character name but that is the name of my villain, and that's the name that we're sticking with for the whole series. <laughs> Yaza said, I'm spending the first half of sprints finishing off an assignment. Awesome. Very cool. Um, alliteration on Bethany Bierman. Yep. Yes. Yes. Alliteration is the word that was evading me. <laughs> um, heavy topic. Yeah, no, my book deals with a lot of kind of heavy um, subjects. It is kind of more like a young adult thriller with some like issues wrapped into it. Because one of the things that I wanted to do with the book was even though it's like more of a scary book, it's not like the source of the horror is not the supernatural scary stuff. The source of the horror is like the real life things that teens deal with on a like a lot of kids deal with on a day to day basis. Um, Diamond Book Rough says, I'm in fantasy. Do you have any advice, advice on naming characters? I don't want to like really give you advice because I don't read. I mean, I read fantasy, but I don't write fantasy. So I haven't spent a lot of time um naming characters in fantasy so i don't feel like i'm the best person who can give you advice on this but i don't know maybe being creative and thorough with your world building and then come up with like a naming system for different like groups of people in your fantasy world that all fit together so like it doesn't really matter what the rule is but as long as there is some cohesion or like some rules that you come up with yourself that could be cool um yeah, I'm sure that more fantasy authors have better tips on this, but I write like thrillers and mysteries and things set in our world. So I don't really know. <laughs> Other than, you know, what sounds cool, that also works. The Unwanted Book Club says it's hard to keep up when you've got everything going at once. Yes. Um, I don't know if you're talking about the stream or not. I am trying to answer as many questions and comments as possible before we start going again. Um, I feel like fantasy likes to take normal names and either add a couple extra letters at the end or mix them in like an anagram. Yes, that's also true. Um, I have read lots of like fantasy books where it's like, you know, Blaze with a Y, which is, you know, one of the characters in the book that I wrote as a teenager. And they have like all the weirdly spelled kind of normal ish names, um, which can be very cool, but it can also be very frustrating when you're, you know, reading them and you're like, why can't it just be spelled the normal way? But that's also probably a me thing. Um, Piper said, I write fantasy. I don't know about names, but I type randomly on the keyboard and that's how I come up with the names for different species. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. So how about we start our second sprint? I think maybe we go for 25 minutes this time. Just, you know, we can write a little bit longer than last time. Um, I'm going to change the time. I like the longer sprints when I'm editing. I know I say, say this like every sprint, but you know, it's still true. All right. So happy writing, everybody. Good luck and happy productivity for whatever you are choosing to do. And I will see you after the sprint.
All right. How was that for all of you? I hope that that was as productive as it was for you as it was for me. I just like in the last 30 minutes of that sprint, I've been going over my outline for days now, just trying to figure out what it is about this outline that I don't like. And I just made like I had a little breakthrough moment where I realized that I had the wrong midpoint and that I could shift shuffle things around and make another thing the midpoint. And I think that that's going to solve a lot of my issues. So now I'm really, really happy because that happened like 20 seconds ago. And I think that that's going to be good. So I hope your sprints were equally productive. Um, how was that for all of you? Let me know in the comments. Diamond Book Rough said zero words distracted. Fair enough. I also did not write any words at all. I just, you know, outlined and stuff. But I have to say, I've been getting very addicted to thinking about like making TikToks because I've like actually started trying to learn the platform and like make some content on there. So I keep getting distracted by like ideas that I have or like things that I want to like actually film and make and do. So I keep finding myself thinking about TikTok when I should be writing, which is bad and something that I need to work on getting better at. So yeah, I absolutely feel you. I've had a lot of sprints like that <laughs> this week. <laughs> Goss Tape says, I wrote an entire character's backstory. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, backstories are really, really fun to write. I always find that when I spend a lot of time on backstory, I get really bummed when I can't include all of that information in my books. I have had people tell me that I have too much character information and like too much focus on character in my thrillers, which is something that I'm working on. But I'm such a sucker for character arcs. Like I just I like every character to be really fleshed out, to grow over the course of the book. And I like spending time showing every little moment. So I have to get better about choosing my moments. <laughs> Otherwise, it just becomes too much. But yeah, backstories are the best. I did that also this week for one of my characters. Piper said, what happened in my book is Bethany ordered a mystery box from the dark web. And when she opens it, she finds Beatrice, the killer doll. Ooh, scary. Is it like a Chucky type sort of book that you're writing? Because um, those are very scary. I find dolls very scary, like just the porcelain dolls, like, you know, how in movies or like old houses, they show like the shelves and shelves and shelves of like porcelain dolls that, that like stare at you. Those are really creepy. I'm writing them into my next thriller, actually, because I find them so creepy. <laughs> Katie Hewitt said, only joined for the last three minutes, wrote the first 60 words of my second draft. Oh, awesome. Are you starting your second draft today? Like for the first time? That's very exciting. Congratulations on finishing your first draft. I hope you can stick around. We're going to do a couple more sprints. So um, we're going to get some more work done today. I hope you can stick around for that. Yaza said, Claire, are you a plotter or a pantser? I am a hardcore plotter. I am incapable of pantsing anything. I have make these really, really detailed grid-like outlines for all of my drafts, or at least most of my drafts. All of my drafts leading up to like draft three or four, where like I have a column, like columns and rows and like have different subplots all mapped out on there. And like, I am incapable of thinking about story unless everything is all plotted out in advance. Um, otherwise, I just, I get too overwhelmed. So I need to be able to see it in kind of a very clear way before even starting to write. What about you, Yaza? Are you a plotter or a pantser? Diamond Book Rough said, Claire, my technique that might work on you is that you can write random stories based on the ideas you have for one month. Then you'll see what you want and don't want when you write it officially. Yeah, I mean, that is a very good idea. Um, I do definitely like enjoy writing random stories. I dislike writing short stories because I find that when I don't give myself time to really get hooked into a book idea it's hard for me to find motivation to write in the same way like i'm so obsessed by like the book ideas that i have and i just like i can't think about anything else and i just want to be with those characters and tell that story and i can't get that same level of investment with a short story just because i don't spend as much time writing about the characters i think i don't really know but short stories are not as exciting to me i always have to like force myself to sit down and write a short story whereas with books i can't help myself i just want to do it all the time so yeah, I think what I'm going to do for this next book idea I have after writing my sequel is just fast draft it, like give myself like, okay, I have like three weeks and I'm going to see if I can get a draft in that time and it doesn't have to be a complete draft. I can like write summaries for certain chapters and just kind of get a sketch of it out there and just let, you know, my creativity kind of run away with me and have that be kind of a fun experience because I think this is going to be a bit of a convoluted book and I'm going to have to take a lot of stabs at it before <laughs> it 
becomes like a book that I'm proud of. But yeah, definitely like writing a bunch of different stories and following ideas that you have is important. I just really, really prioritize completion of books. So I want to make sure that when I start it, I can really like finish it, be proud of it, and then move on to something else. Because otherwise I just, you know, I like being able to have something at the end that I'm proud of sharing with people. And it takes a lot of rewriting for <laughs> my stories to get to that point. Piper says, Beatrice is like a cross between Annabelle and Jigsaw, but she talks in 1920s language. Ooh, that's spooky. Oh, so Beatrice is the doll's name then, not... So, oh, is the doll the main character of your story? Is it like told through the doll's point of view? Because that's really creepy. And Jigsaw is really creepy. And that whole, like, all the traps and stuff has always creeped me out. I haven't been able to watch those movies because it's the gory body horror that always gets to me and freaks me out. The Unwanted Book Club said hardcore pants are for me. I can have general plot or ideas, but if I try to write a single line, I always, always, always stray away. Yeah, I also like, I, yeah, I don't know. I can't work unless I write things in a straight line and like I have an outline and I have like a step-by-step -step thing. I have to make it a very methodical process, which is I think also why a lot of my writing tip videos on this channel are all like, you know, these are four things you can do to do this. Or like in order to have a good, like I'm, I, I'm editing a point of entry video right now. I just filmed an, a, a video about points of entry and I have a very like, I don't know, like a scientific, pro like everything is broken down into like, this needs these four things and these four things need these three things. And like, I have it all kind of, I'm very analytical when it comes to writing. So I think that that's why I'm a plotter and not a pantser. <laughs> but different things work for different people. I was interviewing Don Kurtigich a couple of weeks ago and she was talking about how like she just doesn't really have an analytical process for writing and it's all just you know she figures it out as she goes and she's a lot more like emotions driven when she's approaching her work and not so much like she doesn't really have like a process that she's stopped to think about like how do I do this she just kind of does it so there are so many different ways to approach writing it's it's such a cool thing to talk to different writers and see how they do the same thing that you do but extremely differently <laughs> Piper says, she looks like the animatronic creepy Catherine from Home Depot. Wow. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that is pretty creepy. <laughs> um, and Bethany is the main character. Beatrice is the sidekick of Arthurina the Killer Clown. Oh, okay. I was getting Bethany and Beatrice mixed up in my mat in my met in my mind. Yes. Okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> Although it'd be kind of cool to do like, I don't know. I don't know if you're at all writing from the point of view of Beatrice, but that could be a cool like um companion short story to do like a 1920s dialect version of like a i don't know like a weird point of view villain story it'd be kind of cool diamond book rough said right i'm obsessed with my book so much i can't read anyone's book not even short story <laughs> yeah i mean i oh when, when i'm always like when i read people's book and like i you know obviously i love to read and when i read i always end up thinking of things that I want to do in my stories or getting inspired by other people's work. So I really have to force myself to sit down and be like, we're just reading for pleasure. We're not reading to like run up and rush to the computer and write things down that you like. So yeah, I get, I, I always run back to my book as fast as possible. That's why I always end up writing instead of reading a lot of the time, which is why I need to get a better reading schedule. <laughs> Yaza said 90% just go with the flow, but every now and then I'll outline a section or something that isn't quite working out. Yeah, I feel that I wish I could be a little bit more of a pantser. I find that if I spend too much time outlining, I'm just rearing to go by the end of it and I just can't stop myself from actually starting. But I usually need to like spend a little bit of time plotting before I get to that point because I always, I'm so scared of like spending a lot of time writing a project and reaching a point where I realize that none of what I wrote made any sense up until that point and having to scratch it and go back. So I like to try to like get a little bit ahead of myself by doing a little bit of that work in outlining, but it doesn't always work. A lot of the times I do that anyway. So I really don't think that this is a foolproof system. <laughs> Oh, um, the Unwanted Book Club said do, um, to Piper, do you watch bedtime stories? He has a video I just watched called The Devil in the Doll. Felt feel like you might like that for inspiration. I haven't seen this before. That's like, is it at a YouTuber that does kind of creepy horror stories? Um, I used to stray away and then I plotted and hated it, but now I'm able to stay focused in pantsing after that month technique. Oh yeah, no, that's that, that's cool. I think giving yourself a deadline, deadlines are really important to making sure that you um, actually finish projects and stay on task. I feel like if I didn't set deadlines for myself, I always just take so long to do things that I would be able to rally and do without as much time. 
Sorry, I have a dog barking in the background of this live stream now. <laughs> she loves squirrels. She barks every time she sees a squirrel in the backyard. Um, Piper said, that's a great idea. I also wrote a short story where Bethany is the villain. Ooh, that sounds cool. Yeah, I also like writing short stories for my books. Like I like writing little companion short stories, but I never have as much fun writing them as I do the actual book. I don't know, but I think, you know, they're fun to write anyway. And it allows me to put different parts of my character backstory into stories and actually use that when it, <laughs> it gets cut out of the book for space. The Unwanted Book Club said, that's kind of how I am. I tried to write an outline, character profiles. I feel exhausted before I get to the actual writing. Like it was all work and then I'm just over it. Yeah, no, I feel that too. I think people react differently to different things <laughs> in the writing process. But I think I would get lost and then I would burn out because I didn't feel like I had an idea of where I was going. So everybody's mind works differently. Piper said, I've never seen that before either. Thanks, Unwanted Book Club. My favorite YouTube channel is Beyond Creepy, tons of scary stories. Oh, I also haven't heard of that one. I'm gonna have to check all of these out. I like the kind of spooky stories, like supernatural stuff and also like true crime things. Those creep me out. I'm weirdly, like I love watching true crime documentaries and like true stories and they're so scary, but like out of, for whatever reason, they're really, really addictive. And then I call it work because, you know, sometimes I get inspired by different things that I see in documentaries, and then I can write stories about them. <laughs> Gauze Tape said, my current story is a psychological horror about a mass government experiment involving amnesia and a fake city. Ooh, that sounds very spooky. That's like, sounds kind of dystopian also, like a dystopian psychological horror, but I guess not really if it's not set in the future. <laughs> but all right, so are we thinking about maybe doing another sprint? How are we feeling about maybe like, sticking with 25 minutes this time or was that too long or do we want to go longer let me know in the comments um let me know in about the next like five to ten seconds otherwise we'll stick with 25 minutes and i can set the timer also we can maybe mix it up with the sounds i'll play around i'll, I'll choose another sound to give you an opportunity to vote on switching the time if you want to <laughs> i haven't heard a lot of these yet um Tropical sounds fun. Let's try tropical. All right, perfect. All right, so it seems like everybody is good with 25. So let's do 25 minutes. Awesome, all right. So good luck everybody. Happy productivity or writing sprinting. And oh, we got a vote for elephant timer. Is that a sound? In here, do they have like an elephant sound or is that like a special timer that I don't know anything about? It's not a sound. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that actually has to do with a timer or something you were talking about before. Anyway, all right, so let's do 25 minutes. I'm gonna start the timer. Happy writing everyone. I'll see you after the sprint.
Well, that was a fun timer sound. <laughs> How was that for everybody? How was that sprint? I know I asked this at the end of every single sprint, but I need to come up with a couple more questions to ask. But you know, since that's what brings us all together today, it's probably a safe bet. That was a good sprint for me. I built off of the big plot realization that I had last time we did a sprint. And I kind of made like a little bit of a timeline. Like I'm not gonna show you because spoilers, but like it's like, you know, like an arc type thing with like a timeline and the different plot points and stuff. So I'm very happy and excited about this now. <laughs> I feel so much better. I wasn't expecting to like have this big weight lifted off my shoulders during our sprints this morning, but now it feels like everything is kind of coming together. Like I was really stressed because it felt like just stumbling around in the dark. And even though I was really like trying to make things click in my brain, there was something not quite right, but I didn't know what it is. And I have all these deadlines coming up. So I was worried about it, but now I can breathe again. Now everything is going to be fine because I know what I'm doing. And I'm very excited to get all of this feedback back so I can start incorporating it into this like mega outline and then actually start revisions on draft three. So yeah, how is that for you? Let me know in the comments. Piper said, I have 25,736 words so far. That's amazing. Congratulations. That is a lot of words. How long have you been working on this project? And also, how long do you expect your project to be? Is this also the first draft or are, is this like a um, later draft in um, your process? Goss Tape said, my chapter is almost done. I'm going to end it with a crazy fight. Always a good way to end a chapter. We love a little bit of death and killing and fighting in our fiction. <laughs> Thank you so much, Piper. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. These, I love these sprints. I love doing this. This is like, it's, it's very productive to be surrounded by so many other writers all doing stuff. Like it really helps me focus. Hi, Maddie. Thank you so much for coming by the stream. I hope that you are doing well. Are you going to stay and write with us? If you are, let us know what you're going to be working on in the comments. Thank you so much for popping by. It's so nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, this is a very fun sprint that we just did. Um, I think we're probably going to do another one soon and then maybe wrap it up because this might this next one might be our last sprint just because I need to take my dog to the pet store <laughs> after this because I need to, I'm gonna go meet with a trainer because we're about to go and move my dog out with my parents in Montana. And she's very um, nervous around other like creatures. And I wanna give her some like strong recall and strong safety stuff um, before going out there so that she doesn't get hurt by any of the larger animals that my parents have out there. Um, so we're gonna go do that. And I'm gonna buy a whole ton of dog treats to do uh, donate to the shelter that I volunteer for, for the holidays. So that'll be a fun thing. And I have to do that before the trainer leaves. So I think this might be our last sprint. <laughs> Katie said, reached 500 words on my second draft, wrote the first draft for Nano last month. Ooh, that's awesome. Very, very cool. Yeah, the Nano, I mean, also kudos on starting again so soon after Nano. I feel like after I do Nano, I just need to sleep for like, a, last time I did Nano, I was just so burnt out by the end of it. I needed like some time to recover, but you're really going after it. That's very impressive. <laughs> Hi, Precious Cousins. I'm so glad you could make this stream. It's so nice to see you. That's awesome that you got 84 words. Um, very, very cool. Piper said, I want my novel to be 150 chapters. My first draft I wrote years ago is four chapters. I've been writing my book since October this year. Wow, that's that's very soon. Yeah, that's 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 a lot of words. That is also a lot of chapters. I think, I, if I remember correctly, I think we were talking about this last stream that I did on this channel about how many chapters that was, and we were talking about the um, different lengths of all of your chapters, but... That is a lot of chapters. Most of my chapters are around between like 2,000 and 4,000 words long. So they're a little bit longer. Um, so if I had 150 chapters, that would be a <laughs> crazy long book. Mine are usually around like between 40 and 50 chapters. But yeah, that's, that's 150 is a lot. Hi, Chandra. Thank you so much for coming. Um, and I hope that you can stick around and write with us. 
Maddie said, I'm taking a break from my handwritten novel to work on my Western screenplay, and I forgot how much I love this story. Oh, I remember talking about your Western stream, uh, screenplay, because I know how to speak English, in one of our streams before. It sounds so cool. I also don't know how you can write a book by hand. I My hands would cramp up like crazy. I already need like all like the ergonomic keyboards. I'm not using them right now, but I usually have like a setup with a monitor and everything to keep my posture right and keep my like typing, my wrists at like the proper position for typing. Otherwise, my hands and wrists will just start hurting so much. I have like a stupid amount of like stretches I have to do and like make sure that everything is like working properly so that I don't get too much wrist pain. I've also like looked at, I've started dictating more. I don't know how I could handwrite. I mean, it's very impressive. I'm, I'm low key kind of jealous. Chandra said, I'm lurking, but playing computer games to recover from Nano. Yeah, see, I, I would also need to recover from Nano. I don't know how Katie is already working on their second draft. <laughs> I like. I think I slept for like a week after finishing Nano, and then it was like time for finals because I was still in school. Maddie said, my, hands hurt, my hand hurts like crazy at the end of every writing session. Yeah, mine would too. I don't know how you do it. That's very cool, though. Why do you write by hand? Is it just easier to like write fast that way is there a reason that you like to do it it's cool i've always like one of my weird um unrealistic maybe somewhat realistic dreams is to one day write a book on a typewriter and like actually have that experience of like writing on the typewriter and having all of the pages but it might also drive me crazy because my writing and revising process is just so much like i stop midway and edit as i go and you can't really do that when you're writing on a typewriter but it would still be cool. Maybe a short story on a typewriter because then it wouldn't be as much of a huge project to revise. I remember in high school, I went to the British Library in London and saw all of like the original manuscript pages that were all like handwritten. Or I think they also had like some um, typewriter pages and stuff and they would show all the revisions that authors would make and how they would just like have a page and then they would write all over the page and then they would have to like rewrite the entire thing from scratch with all those things incorporated that just that sounds like a ridiculously hard revision process to do every single time yaza said a good fountain pen helps tremendously with handwriting sessions oh yeah no i'm sure the um a good pen grip would be important too i hold my pen really weird like in elementary school i used to get in trouble because with my teachers because i held my pen weird but my mom taught me how to hold a pen this way because i would always like hold it like this and then my finger would like get really strained here because I'd put a lot of pressure on my finger when I was holding my pen. So now I ho like hold my pen between these two fingers so that my finger can't bend as much, um, so, which is kind of weird. But I also think that like, if you have a good grip on your pen, it probably doesn't hurt as bad, but I don't know. Or like what one of those squishy things, like I know I used to have those in elementary schools, little squishy things that would go onto your um, pencils, but then they didn't work with the new grip that I found anyway. <laughs> Maddie said, when I first started writing it, it was always by hand. So I wanted to try and write a full novel first draft, at least by hand as a kind of callback to that time. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, I always used to write by hand in like class when I was supposed to be taking notes, I would write like stories and stuff in my notebooks and then I would type them up later. But I don't know. I think it's just too much on my hands because I also really love crocheting and that's also kind of like a hard thing that would hurt my, that kind of makes my wrists ache. So yeah, I don't know. I do like doing that though. I should, I'm, I'm, I might start doing that again for short stories. When I have like a lot of writer's block, I do that because for like whatever reason that helps me. And I also do all of my outlining by hand and like with the sticky notes and everything, I don't like electronic sticky notes. Like it needs to be phys like physical copies of stuff because that helps. <laughs> Micah said, I did write the first 10 chapters of my book by hand too, but then I switched and now I mostly write on my laptop. Yeah, I like writing on laptops. I don't know. I mean, I think if I didn't have so much wrist pain, <laughs> I would enjoy writing by hand more, but it also like doubles the amount of time I have to spend working on something because I'd have to write it by hand and then type it up and then like revise it. So I don't know. I, I, I'm enjoying my system now, though. I really like my ergonomic keyboard because the keys are just really easy to press and it's it's a nice one. It's super loud. It annoys everybody. If I'm working in the same room as anybody, they always have to like wear noise canceling headphones or like they get so because it's just like click, 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 click all the time. <laughs> Chandra said, if you can write, why does the teacher care how you do it? LOL. Yeah. It's, OK, so this is what I used to. This was a personal rant for me, too. This used to get me so mad. Because I went to a school where like it was outlawed to write in print. You had to write in cursive. 
And if you wrote in, in print or they saw that you were writing in print, you would get in trouble. And I always used to get so angry because like I could write in cursive. I knew how to do it, but I just preferred to write in print. And I was writing a lot, but I would still get in trouble because I was writing it in print instead of cursive. So I remember my teachers had to call me in for a meeting because they were like, they held up the story and they was like, whose is this? And I was like, it's my, because they thought it was one of the kids who had transferred from public school. And I had to say that it was mine. And I got in a lot of trouble because I had written the whole story in print. So they shouldn't care. I don't know why they care, but they care a lot. And it's really stupid. Sorry. Yeah. My personal rant is over too. Yaza said, I use a caveman death grip combination holding pens. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, everybody has the way that they do it. I, As long as you can write and as long as it's comfortable for you, I don't know why other people care so much, really. Tim said, I would love to write a novel by hand, but probably never will. I do most of my world building and plotting by hand on legal pads, notepads, and notebooks are awesome. I love legal pads. I did debate in high school and college, so I had legal pads for all of the debate rounds. And when I stopped doing debate, I stopped using legal pads. So then I started using them for writing, and I love them because I got them all in bulk, and I had so many extra ones. And they're like, I like how the pages are much longer. And yeah, I'm a big legal pen, legal pad fan. Maddie said, I wrote a silly princess castle king story when I was about seven and my Mima read it and told me I should be a writer and 20 years later, here I am. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to write a lot in um, school too. I would write all of the stories by hand because I went to a Montessori school and I didn't have a lot of like restrictions over what I could spend my time doing. I think I had like some lessons that I had to do, but other than that, I could really spend my time doing whatever I want. So I spent most of my days just like writing stories by hand and like composition notebooks and illustrating them and stuff. And then I was able to like bind them. So I have a couple of books from like, you know, 2007 <laughs> that I wrote that are all like bound with like fabric covers and stuff in those like big plastic rings. It's the good old days. <laughs> Katie Hewitt said, I love crochet. I got in the habit of crocheting between sprints between during nano. I love crocheting. I love crocheting in between writing. It's so much fun. It uses a completely different part of your brain, which I really love. And then you get to make like cute little things afterwards afterwards and things. I don't know. I really like it. I'm kind of putting together a little bit of a holiday crochet plan right now because I want to crochet a bunch of stuff and then donate them um, to different like nonprofits and stuff. So I'm working on figuring out places I can donate all of the crocheted goods because I like doing stuff like that around the holidays. <laughs> Oh, Piper said, I have to go now. Oh, bye. Bye, Piper. Thank you so much for coming and stopping by and writing with us. It was so nice to see you in the comments. I hope you have a great rest of your day. How are you thinking? I think we should probably do our last sprint now. Um, yes, I think that that's a good idea. What I think maybe we can do a 20 minute sprint this time because it's our last sprint and then we can wrap it up. If that sounds good with you, let me know. If it doesn't, you have about 10 seconds <laughs> to put your input in the comments and then we can change the time. Let's see. I can change the sound again. Um, I haven't heard so many of these and I haven't like sampled them because I don't really go and check out the sounds in, unless I'm actually doing one of these. So I'm going to experiment with stuff while we're actually live, which is going to be nice and fun. Um, all right. Yes. So Precious Cousin says 25 minutes. Perfect. Okay. So we can do 25 minutes. That's absolutely fine. Um, cool. Well, I have set the timer. Happy writing, everybody. Happy productivity. I will see you in 25 minutes.
All right. Happy final sprint, everybody. I hope that that was really productive for all of you. I know that a lot of you had to step out in the middle of that sprint. I tried to say bye to people as they were leaving, but I also just got really hooked into the last part of this outline and forgot to pay attention to the comments for a couple of minutes there. Um, it was really, really nice seeing everybody who was able to come to the stream. I saw Justin was able to pop in and offer some good vibes and energy, which was very, very nice. Thank you so much for coming and doing that, Justin. Um, I know these people have probably already left, but bye, Yaza. I'm so happy that you were able to stop by and join the stream. Bye, Micah. I am so happy that you were also able to come. I'm really, really glad that this was productive for you as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was a little, little, little spooky. Um, not quite as spooky, though, as the invasion sound on um, one, two, three timer. Invasion is pretty intense. I think that that just kind of feels like a nice like little bell being rang. Like it's, it's, it's not quite as jarring as like the giant alarm sounds um, that <laughs> often do sound. Hi, media attorney. Um, I'm glad that you were able to stop by. That was our last sprint. So this is um, not going to continue very much longer. But as always, you can, you know, go and watch the replay and would always be very appreciative. Or I would always I would always be very appreciative of it because it would, you know, help my watch hours on this channel. But no, I mean, you will be able to watch the replay soon. And yeah, I hope that even if you don't and miss the stream that we will we will choose to come back to others in the future. I have another one, I think on December 18th, that's going to be holiday themed. I'm gonna make a nice fun little timer for it. So that'll be fun. Um, I'm so glad that you were able to stop by Katie. I also need accountability and motivation. It's very, very helpful to do this with you all. I always am so pr super productive during all of these. Bye guys tape. Thank you so much for coming and writing with us. I'm really, really glad that so many of you could come out today and hang out with me this morning. Um, we got a quick question during that stream, which was how to write fantasy, which I am do not really feel qualified to answer because I don't write fantasy. There are many YouTubers who are fantasy authors who will definitely be able to answer this question better than me. Um, so I definitely recommend going and like searching for YouTube videos about writing fantasy. I just don't want to like give you any bad advice because I write mysteries and thrillers and I've never written any fantasy story in my life. <laughs> Bye, Maddie. Thank you so much for coming. And it was also very, very lovely to see you. I am so glad so many of you were able to come out and spend time with me this morning. I am very grateful. And I had a lot of fun doing this and got a lot of work done. If you are interested in coming to my next sprint, I want to make sure I don't get the date wrong as I tell you. Yeah, it's going to be Saturday, December 18th at 10 a.m. Eastern time. We are going to do more sprints like this. It's going to be super fun. You should come and write with me then too. And I hope that you have a wonderful next two weeks and I will see you all very soon. Thank you all so much. And if you enjoyed it, you know, like, and subscribe. <laughs> Bye everybody.